Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. Halloween is right around the corner and frankly, I am exhausted from seeing all these very uninspired, cliche, tired Halloween costumes. I'm also disappointed that many people have taken up the habit of doing costumes last minute just to attend a party and so the person wearing the costume seldom feels like they've embodied the character they're portraying. I feel that dedication to your Halloween costume, as well as putting effort into your persona, is important. And if you don't think that, I just want to remind you that Halloween is the one day a year you can be your strangest, most extreme self without criticism or concerned glances. Might as well put some effort into your costume and have a great time. Even if you just sit at home, you don't even have to go to a party. It's the one day a year where you can embrace your alter ego or embrace the character you are within, which society does not permit. I mean, on Halloween, pretty much anything goes. Halloween and raves. The costumes that I'm gonna propose in this video, there are five of them, I believe. You might've heard about some of these characters. Some of them are from film, some of them are from runway. Maybe you haven't heard of them at all. But I think that these costumes, if you show up to a party, there is not gonna be one other person in that party with the same costume as you. I think that these costumes are pretty unique. Definitely unexpected for sure. All of these costumes on purpose, of course, are very feminine presenting. They all, pretty much all of them, fall within some kind of femme fatale category, which we all love that, don't we? So here are some costumes that I hope you guys have some fun with. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the characters and what you can do to create the costumes, high budget or low budget, whatever it may be. Number one is going to be Maria from Metropolis. If you have not seen Metropolis, it is one of the most visually beautiful films ever created. It's a German expressionist film from 1927. It is in black and white and it is a silent film. Metropolis, in essence, is a, is a movie about industrialization, about the wealth gap, and it's also about temptation. And there's a lot of religious undertones to this film as well when you watch it. We're not gonna get too much into the plot, however. Maria is a saint-like figure, but the actress that plays Maria plays a dual role. She also plays the robot, which takes the form of a robot, but also is a robot in a human guise named Futura, in the novel anyway. Futura is the creation of the inventor Rotvang, and the way that she is presented in the film to the people of the metropolis is certainly an object of desire and temptation. Whenever she is first introduced, she is a robot, but she is in a human body, and she is wearing this incredible, outfit and she's backlit. This is a black and white movie, so you have to bear in mind that light and shadow play a very important role and her introduction is all light and shadow and she wears this bejeweled cape, she's bejeweled nipple pasties and she has a low rise kind of fringe skirt as well as a headpiece. She has very dark, very appropriate vampy makeup as well. And it's also very, very obvious whenever she's presented as she is holding a chalice, this Futura trapped in the body of a human woman, she is meant to symbolize the whore of Babylon. Just that opening scene where she's dancing and she's moving her torso in these abject strange ways is to insinuate that she's a robot in a human's body. It's just amazing. I'm telling you, please just watch this film. It's so good. But that outfit. It's pretty easy to execute. All you have to do is just get a long couple yards of fabric for the cloak, which you can just put together with a pin or something. Just make sure it's bedazzled or has sequins on it. Crystal nipple pasties, which you can get pretty much anywhere now as it was very popular for raver culture. And then the headpiece, just, I would do what everybody was doing for the Met Gala whenever, <laughs> They were doing the heavenly bodies theme and just get some zip ties and just put some crystals on it onto a headband and you, bam, you have a headpiece. 
The headpiece that they use for Metropolis is pretty, pretty elaborate and strangely shaped. Uh, if you want to, I would just have the headband maybe tilted back on your head a little bit so that it hangs the way that hers does, and you can just pin it in place. And of course, the skirt, I would definitely say just, I don't get a, get a waistband, let's say from another skirt if you want, or just a rubber waistband in general from any fabric store, and attach silver fringe to it and you have the costume. I'm saying this uh, because I'm gonna be <laughs> Maria slash Futura for Halloween this year, and that's going to be my costume, which is why I mentioned it first. Maria from Metropolis, that's number one. Number two is going to be Joan of Arc, but Alexander McQueen style. Now I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like you people don't know who Joan of Arc is, but you may not know Joan, the runway show from Alexander McQueen. It was the autumn winter 1998, show for Alexander McQueen, and it is one of the, arguably one of the most well-known Alexander McQueen runway shows, but it's just one of the best displays of his conceptual imagination, and it is very characterized by the intensity and strength of the women that are in the clothes and that are portraying Joan of Arc. Now, the there's two specific possibilities that I want to offer here. The first one is going to be a little bit simpler to execute, which some, you know, not everybody has the time to create an elaborate costume, but I do think that you can still put effort into it, but the costume can be very simple. And I personally did this two years ago for Halloween. It is going to be the one model who has red eyes, red eyeliner, and she has two braids on the front that are kind of act like curtain bangs, and she is wearing a red snake skin, I believe, or some kind of animal skin, shiny lacquered dress. Super, super simple, especially if you have long hair. All you have to do is just take pieces of your hair and braid them very, very, very thin and wrap them over top of your face and just pin it underneath other parts of your hair so that it can't be seen. I didn't wear the contacts. You don't have to wear the contacts. I personally can't wear them because I am blind as a bat and I can't wear colored contacts. But if you can, by all means, get those red contact lenses just to just for that extra push on that costume. And then just red eyeliner, super, super simple, nothing crazy. And the dress, you can literally wear any long maxi dress of your choice. I think black would be fine, red would be great. Silver, because there's a lot of chain mail in this show, would be awesome as well. Really, really simple costume, but I can tell you, Nobody else is going to look like that. The second one is the more extreme one, and it is the outfit that this show, that the Joan show is known for, and you've probably, if you know anything about fashion at all, you have probably seen a gif of this model at the end. It's the finale. You have probably seen this before. It is a woman that is in a sequin, red sequin fringe dress that the dress is actually elongated to cover her entire face like a mask and the model actually is turning on a turntable stage with fire, a ring of fire around her. Real fire, by the way. That costume is if, you, <laughs> if you're dedicated enough to cover your face for the whole entire night. You can do this with red lace. You can do this with netting. This costume can be up to you. You can change it to suit you if you want to eat. <laughs> That's definitely more of an extreme costume, but it definitely has effect because it's meant to symbolize blood as Joan of Arc was burned at the stake. Don't even have to do your makeup or anything. So yes, Joan of Arc from Alexander McQueen. Number three is going to be Jill Masterson, and she is the woman that was painted gold for 007's Goldfinger film. So what's really interesting is that there is an urban legend associated with painting your skin with paint because in the film, Jill Masterson dies from skin asphyxiation because they painted her in gold. And it was actually believed that you could die from skin asphyxiation, which is not true. <laughs> but people actually believed that the actress that portrayed Jill Masterson in this film, they actually believe that she died because she like dropped off the face of the earth after this role. But Jill Masterson is of course the lover of Oric Goldfinger and she helps him cheat at cards. And then of course she hopelessly falls in love with James Bond and Goldfinger gets very upset and has her executed pretty much by somebody painting her with gold. 
So this one is pretty simple. I mean, get gold body paint and just go to town. Obviously blonde hair, blonde wig would be preferable to keep the whole entire, to keep the look monochromatic and give a little red lip if you want. But uh, some of the more popular adaptions of it with makeup artists and stuff, they do it with a red lip. The original Jill Masterson painted gold had lips painted gold. There was no makeup or anything like that. Put on a gold bikini or nipple paces or whatever kind of party you're going to. Do whatever you want, but just paint your whole goddamn body gold. Put on some clear heels and steal the show. So I have also, this has nothing to do with this character, but I recently, a coworker of mine, lent me a book, a coffee table book on black metal in Norway. And I was flipping through it and it was a, it was a photographer that knew a lot of the people in the black metal scene. And there was a picture. And if you don't know anything about black metal, it's probably, especially in Norway, and also it's probably one of the most extreme movements in metal like ever. It's a... Uh, it's pretty sweet in its extremity. <laughs> they they were pretty insane, you know, they, they, there was a lot of gore involved. I don't really know how else to explain this. Just look it up for yourself. I would just say be a black metal groupie and get some fake blood and, and paint your entire nude body in fake blood or real blood, I don't know, whatever you're into. As far as this type of costume goes, it could go either way. You can either paint your body in gold or you can do it in blood. I think both are pretty good for Halloween. The fourth costume I'd like to talk about is going to, literally the character's name in this film is Woman in Blonde Wig. And Woman in Blonde Wig is from the film Junking Express. First of all, as, as far as mystery goes and exoticism when it comes to these costumes, Woman in Blonde Wig, she doesn't even have a name and neither do the other important characters in this film. And that that gives them kind of a sense of ubiquity and anonymity. And I really, I really quite like that. It's very alluring and it only makes this character more iconic, I think. The Woman in Blonde Wig is technically a prostitute. She's kind of like this empty vessel for the cops, one of the cops' desires and the blonde wig, the blonde, blonde hair in general has been a sign of illicit activity for hundreds of years. And the woman in a blonde wig is an agent of the underworld in more ways than one. So that also gives her an air of mystery and danger as well. But yeah, all you have to do is get some red glasses. If you have blonde hair, just curl it a little bit up near your cheeks, put on a big trench coat and some heels and you've got a costume. If you want like a fake gun in your purse or something, pull that one out. And all you gotta do at the party is pretty much just sit near a wall or sit and smoke a cigarette and you, you've got it down pretty much. Just like, don't talk. The last character that I would suggest for a Halloween costume is going to be from Shanghai Express with Marlene Dietrich. Marlene Dietrich is one of the most famous silver screen actresses. And in Shanghai Express, her name is Shanghai Lily. First of all, that name is so incredible. I honestly want to change my name to that name or like name my daughter that name, Shanghai Lily. Especially back then, back in like the 30s and 40s, that, it, it, that was just such, China was just such an exotic place. And of course, Marlena Dietrich was meant to symbolize the exotic and sexual desire and love and, and all of these mob feelings that people have uh, have had or have wanted to have at that time. And this was, Shanghai Express was one of the films that were pre-code, which if you don't know what that means, there was, there was quite a few films before the code. Morally, characters could pretty much do anything and say anything. And then it was brought to people's attention that this could have a negative impact on the audience. And so there became censorship guidelines within the film industry in order to make sure that the characters were not morally compromised in any way. And there had to, there had to be, the good guy always had to win, basically. The femme fatale had to die, or she had to be reborn, or whatever it may be. The ending of the film always had to end on a moral note. Anyway. 
that just that's just gives an extra little tint to the to the whole film as a as a whole but shanghai lily is traveling on the express train and she is what they call a coaster which is just a very very lenient term for prostitute or fallen woman i suppose but it is a love story anyway her the specific look i want to talk about here is whenever she has the veil and the cock feathers and the pearls the cock feathers you're probably not going to find those anywhere they're very jagged and very rare <laughs> but you can simulate them by literally going to the party store and finding those cheap black or colored boas that they have there that'll do it get a string of pearls put a net over your face and a small hat you know put your hair up in a chignon or something like that and you are shanghai lily in that film shanghai lily is meant to like many of these other characters are meant to symbolize sexuality sensuality illicit activity mystery all of that if you can get a string of fake pearls and a boa and a net for your face and do your eyebrows kind of strange then you have it all right it's getting dark in here so those are the five costumes that I have to share with you guys today. I, I have to say, uh, I remembered when I was doing this video that my parents actually used to rent costumes, or I guess uh, stage costumes from the theater for Halloween. And they were actually the costumes that people would wear on stage. They were very much like historically accurate and very detailed and very real. And some of them were probably vintage. They were very expensive to rent but i just love that my parents were <laughs> at that time in their life they were the type of people to use their hard-earned money to spend to rent out costumes that historically accurate for halloween parties that was that was an era i'm so proud of them for that honestly it is getting so dark in here I'm just going to say happy Halloween now to everybody because I doubt that I'm going to actually remember to do it when Halloween time actually comes. So happy Halloween to you all. Fine people. I hope you guys have a wonderful time, whatever you're doing, even if you're staying in. I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. I hope your costumes are phenomenal and enjoy yourselves. <laughs> I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.